What's up y'all, this is Henny, and today, coming back again with another review. Is it another review? Do I really even do that many reviews? No, but listen, today I do have one, and it's basically my take on Beatmaker 3 and the way that I've used it for the past six months. There's not really a way that I could comprehensively get into this as a review besides just showing you how I use it on a daily basis. So this might be long, I don't know. We're gonna start to see, I got a camera up top, I got a camera facing me, I got audio recording on the side. I'm gonna make sure I give it to you and I give it to you raw. Too far, too far. Um, let's go. <laughs> So the thing that I love about Beatmaker 3 is it encompasses all the many things that I need in an iOS music device. When it comes to sequencing, when it comes to drum programming, when it comes to using uh, plugins and different interapp audio uh, sounds and then good organization, good file system management, good exporting, there's not too much it can't do. And uh, for the price point, this thing is truly amazing and truly changed the way that I'm creating music every day now. And I know there's a lot of people trying to figure out how do I, how do I get started in something like this and you know, what does it all entail? I'm gonna break down a track that I had that I made a few days ago and show you all the instances on what I did to create this track and all the different ways that you can use Beatmaker 3 for yourself when it comes to either sampling, Trump programming, using uh, you know audio to come into it and sampling that, or even um, sampling the plugins and then bringing it back in. All different types of ways that I could possibly think of using Beatmaker 3 in its beat making stage. And let's just get into it. So the first thing I always start out with, nine times out of 10 is my drums. So I got my Audio Technica's on deck, you feel me? Uh. The first thing you really want to do is find your drum sounds. You can create a bank or you can just create banks on the fly depending on how, you know, how you're feeling creatively that day. And so at this day I said, okay, let me, you know, there's some sounds that I was looking at, some SP1200 uh, drum sounds that I had. Um, and I can go into samples and search for SP, SP1200. And I have all these sounds. Some I've used more than once. That's why they're more shown more than one time. And you can just literally drag them in. And so I drag in these and I created this simple drum track. All right. So I have that loop. I added this sound underneath my kick to give it a little bit more bottom. So it's the same sound. I come into my effects and you can see I have two effects that I'm using. I'm using the Maxima plugin and the Low Fly Dirt plugin, which is extremely dope. So if you go into here, you can see that this plugin is grayed out. If I turn it on, you can see it's already, you can see that it's already given it more, more beef, more punch. I basically kept it on its stock setting and just turned the mix down a little bit just to give it a little bit more fat, fatness. And then I'll take the low fly dirt and just gave it a little bit of dirt on that kit. It was already a dirty kit, but you can go all the way in. I kind of just took it right about there. So I get how I like it. I had some live sample drums and I just added that underneath the snare to kind of give it more of a live feel. And so what I did was I just played it underneath. So you can hear here. Yeah. 
I also added, a, I know you probably heard that 808 that I added. So cool thing is you can use this key, you know, this key button and play your sounds in their key. You know, change them by octave, change it by semitone, just by tapping that button. If you wanted it higher by an octave, you can go up. Come down here, or you can change it by semitone. And keep it right where it was. And I basically played that afterwards. I came back in once I laid my melody down and I put the 808 to tune to this to the key that I was in. So I'll I'll, I'll touch on that in a little bit. Now I have a pretty dope loop started. And I always love to layer, love to layer, love to layer drums. So this piece is just a feel. I have this and I just added that at the end of the two bar loop so it goes like this yeah and when I start a loop just to be uh, a little bit more detailed you know you can easily loop any sound just by dragging your finger to the specific to the specific point that you want. So right here I have a four bar loop. I just kind of drag that to four bars so that it's always looping, uh, you know, easily for me at four bars. Some, you know, somebody might not know exactly how that works. And you can see up top here, this kind of shows your whole sequence. You can drag that. When we speak about quantize, I usually use it off and on. You know, you can go right here into the queue on the top of the transport menu and you hit that and you'll see the recording options quantize notes on quantize notes off right when i usually start my drums i'll keep them on and keep a simple drum track so when i did that first loop i did it with the quantize on and when i was adding my different pieces whether it was a layer or hi-hat or something like that i'll turn it off to give it more swing and more of a natural feel so i actually have a drum going specifically on the beat but then I still have uh, other pieces that are a little bit delayed or maybe a little bit slower just to kind of give it a little bit of a little bit of flow, a little bit of sway. And that's how I do a lot of my drum tracks, just to give it a little bit more rhythm than just everything being specifically on beat. And so with the feel and the snare, I turn these off. I already have a group of sounds that I've labeled Henny's hats and um, what I did was I didn't use the quantization. I basically just played it, played it live. Like. Yeah. Starting to get that vibe. I'm usually working really fast, trying to get my ideas coming as quickly as possible. And by that time, I'm usually at the point where I feel good about the drum loop. And I'm saying, okay, where am I going with this? And this is where I bring in my keyboard. That I've talked about many times, my X key air. So if anybody doesn't know how to set up their X key air for Beatmaker 3, you go into these three lines up at the top, you hit this gear wheel, you go over here to audio MIDI devices, MIDI, you hit the Bluetooth button and you'll see all your Bluetooth devices. MIDI X, MIDI X, uh, my X key air 25 Bluetooth is not connected. I hit connect, not connected. Now it's connected. Get out of there, X that out. And I go to the next track I'm using. And this is a sound by Clev Grand called Jesse. For people who don't know about Beatmaker 3, you have four different ways you can view it. Um, you can view it in its pad mode showing you that already you've been seeing that and you've also been seeing the sequence layer mode um, these are my main views that i use for kind of getting back and forth to drum programming and sequencing now when it comes to editing my sounds and actually you know my sounds and importing or even bringing in plugins for my sounds you're going to use you know your edit window and it has sampler layer modulations mapping and your plugin and so 
The dope thing about Beatmaker 3 is it supports, you know, audio unit plugins, inner app audio, and what they call audio bus, which takes one app, syncs it to another app, and then allows you to, you know, to play it within a specific app. You know, for, for the most part, I, I love using audio unit plugins just because they're convenient. You can use many instances of them in different tracks without having to, you know, reconfigure like an audio bus or inner app audio. And it just kind of works inside your app, just like a plugin would inside a DAW. And so this app by Clapground is called Jesse. It's basically a vocal, um, It's a really, really dope um, vocal, kind of like a vocal pad. And um, the harder you hit it, <laughs> the crazier the dude sounds. So it's like, or, <laughs> so I use this shit all the time. I know more people will start using this shit, but it just sounds fucking amazing. And so uh, I just came up with a cool little pattern. Play that, added some saturation um, as an effect. You can go add effect. You can see all the effects they have, but they also have audio unit effects, just like I talked about earlier. So added saturation to it and added some reverb. Took the reverb down, the stereo width about 80%, the mix only about 15%, and the room size still at 90 to still kind of give it a big boomy sound. And that's how you have uh, this sound. Uh, before I get through these other pieces, I literally started down here. I, what I did was I took my device and I came over to my other station where I play with my bigger keyboard. Say for instance, you have some apps that you want to use that support audio bus or inner app audio and don't support the audio unit plugin. What I like to do is go in and sample using audio bus or using the inner app audio and then bring it back into my track. So for this next piece, what I did was I created a new bank, go down to the edit tab, go to my plugins, hit audio bus, select audio bus, go into you know the app that I wanna use. In this instance, it's FM player, a dope app that um, has some really cool FM sounds. That wasn't it. Tap to launch that. Go back in, send it to Beatmaker 3. So I went over to my other station and I started playing ideas um, over the top of what I had. And um, you can see there's a start button right here. If I press that start button, it's gonna start recording what's coming from that app. So that's what I recorded. And uh, basically I hit the start button. Something simple like that, but literally I was playing that over there. I hit stop, stop recording. Then I'll go in and I go back to my edit window. I get out of here. You can see that's what I just recorded into pad number two. Now, if I keep hitting pad number two, you'll see that it keeps hitting the C1 or the C3, one of those um, from the from FM player still. So I still have to go to plugin and unload the plugin to just hear my sounds um, that I recorded in. So now if I go back to my sampler, I can play it with the track. And that's what I did here. I played it. and I recorded it in, and uh, that's how I got this. Now, you're looking at my sequence and you're saying it's an audio track. So sometimes when you're doing a lot and you wanna conserve space or you have a lot of EQs or effects that you put on a specific track and you kinda of wanna lock it in place, um, what I'll usually do is I'll take a sound, say for instance, 
that's that track what i did was i took that track and i said okay i love what that sounds like let me create a new audio track so i create a new audio track i hold it down say where's the audio input coming from say i want it to come from any of these so if it's that track that I just EQ'd, just put a dope effects on. So I figure out what channel I'm recording. I go to internal, say I want to record from audio one. I record arm that, it's record armed. Now when I record audio one and I hit record on my transport window, it's literally going to record that channel. So you'll see it in red. Now you see I have a new audio file that's just that sound that I wanted to record in. That's literally what I did for that specific track. I wanted to show you how I did it. And so I'll just take the, uh, the pencil, grab that, remove that, and now I have it perfectly in my loop. So that's what I did for a few of these tracks on here is I took the sample, I played it in, I EQ'd it, I put effects on it, and then from there, I went ahead and recorded it back in as a in, in my timeline as an audio track. And it, and it frees up some resources, it allows you to do more. You can still double tap this audio and you can live stretch it and you can, you know, you can still flip it and do things with it so it don't feel like it's completely locked to that tempo or completely locked to that signature or even that what key it is. You can still manipulate that and get it to sound the way you want. So I have had no issues with sampling back into or re-recording sounds that are already in, you know, the app. That's how I sample from different apps into Beatmaker. I literally use audio bus or inner app audio. I bring in the app and then I sample that app into Beatmaker. So like I use Core Gadget and uh, Core Gadget's an amazing, amazing app by itself. But for me, my workflow works best with Beatmaker 3. So I sampled the sound from Gadget to Beatmaker 3. And uh, this is another sound that I sampled. Added some reverb, added some stereo widening, and that's how you get the sound with it. And playing it together. Mm. I like this. <laughs> yes. So there might be times where you want to sample your voice or bring in a microphone. Um, maybe you want to do direct audio into, you know, uh, Beatmaker 3. And there's two, two different types of ways you could do that. You know, you could literally come in here to uh, the sequence menu, come all the way down, create a new audio track. And, uh, you know, you could hold down the audio track button and it says arm record. You want to arm record on. Right now I have my mic here and it's connected to... Um, Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yes, yes. It's just a basic mic that I like to sample with. Um, and I'm bringing it into my short NVI right here. And uh, now you can hear me talking into the mic and I can literally just record. If I had this all the way sequenced out, we can just start recording audio like that. But since I'm usually just creating beats from this platform and I do audio when I go to the studio in Pro Tools, uh, I like to sample sound, sample my voice. I've done it a million times and um, so to this track, I just was humming some some notes, you know, um, in the background of this track, and I thought I would record it and, you know, freak it a little bit. So I went in here. It's the other way I sample. I go in here, you know, like I sampled the audio internally. I just go to internal, you know. Uh, I'm not doing internal this time. I'm doing hardware input, MVI. And now you can see that I can start recording in here. Um, destination pad. Let me try a different pad. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'll just stop that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
and I just sampled that in there. So what I did was. I mean, you know, not everybody got the singing, singing voice, but you know, I was just coming up with an idea. So I took that like I've done many times, put the mic down here um, and uh, started freaking it. There's a dope app called Harmony 8 and um, it's made by Veerson. Veerson has some crazy audio manipulation apps. That was hard to get out, said that a few times, but that's what it is, is audio manipulation. And so I brought in their Harmony 8, and um, when I did that, and I play it, if I go in here to edit, all you can see is I shifted the, um, I have another voice going, and I shifted it up an octave, and I made it about 62% um, wet, and then I took the male to female, you see you can switch it, and I just went it more female and brought it to the right where my original was to the left. And so that's how you get this. Then I have another app called Band Shift. Now with Band Shift, you can kind of freak the filters, the LFOs and stuff like that. And so what I did was I took that and I just played with one of their radio filters. And that's how I used to get this. And so from there, I have, you know, a harmony effect, the band effect, and now they also have an audio effects app. And all I did was give it a little bit more drive, or some delay, so you can go in and out of stuff, some phaser if you want. Uh, didn't use the phaser, I just used the drive and the delay. And now I get this. Oh, shit, my bad. And then if you really want to get crazy, you go in and there's another app called Dead Dallas, Dead, Dead Dallas. I don't know how to say that shit. God. And this is a really crazy man manipulation app and um, they have some cool uh, templates, but uh, I just kept it simple and tried to really freak my voice with the, with, with the parameters and that and got this. Added more reverb. Delay. And then I did an auto pan so that kind of goes in and out of each ear. Sample my voice. Freaked it, flipped it, turned it around upside down, and then when you add it to the track, um, you get this. So I basically have the start to a pretty dope track. And I could have gone on and just sequenced it out, dropped pieces out, brought pieces in, and kind of called it a day. But I wanted to go the extra mile, maybe give it a bridge or a B section. I have this good groove. Now, if I want to break it down, what do I want to do? And so I literally muted all of these other sounds, and I brought in some uh, roads. So now I have this. And this Rhodes is by Clef Glenn again, and this is their Tines. And I've showed it before, but I love the way it sounds. It's simple, and it's just a good sounding Rhodes for the price. And I put it on a lot of my tracks just to give it that flavor. One of my other favorite apps for bass and leads is the Moog Model 15. And... Um, I just used a clean bass on here and gave it some bass. Uh. 
So, you know, smoothing it out, and I was like, okay, I might as well add some strings to it as well. Isymphonic has some really great sounding strings, and it reminds me a lot of uh, my first contact sounds from Native Instruments. And so I just started layering the strings to the to the roads, and I got this. And I couldn't stop there. I went to uh, another program called Poison, Poison 202. I have this uh, lead that I was playing with, and uh, yeah, the lead is. Was playing around with it and came up with this. Mm. You know, for some of these, I just added some lo-fi dirt. Let's see here, isymphonic, I added some reverb, a little touch of a six band EQ. And it wasn't complete until I added some type of rhythm to it, so I went ahead and added some snaps to it. So what I did, I brought these snaps in. I hit one. And then, I did that one quantized, and then the other ones I did just a little off, just to kind of give it more of a natural snap. And uh, this is what it sounds like. So now you can see that you can sample in this thing, you can record directly in it. Um, you know, if I was with some of you know my live musician players, I would have took something like my MVI and, you know, maybe played bass instead of using that Moog bass or brought up some guitars straight into here. And, um, you know, when you have all these sounds together now, you know, you have um, quite a lot to play from when you want to sequence a track. And I've showed before how I se sequence tracks. And so this is, uh, this is how I'm breaking this one down. Let's do this. Select them all. I'm going to repeat. Figure out where I want to start. Maybe start with this this Jesse sound. I'm gonna start like that. And I love using the Apple Pencil, given the fact that it makes editing so much easier. Turn my loop off. Yeah, I'd be at. Alright. Another track. 
Yeah, thanks. Business drop. The business. The business. 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 The business. So once I have all of this, you know, I literally can take these files. All I have to do is hit this button. You know, make sure you save. Copy samples. I usually save. Boom. With my samples copied. But um, when I went to go export, I export here. You know, you have all these different options. You can export the song or just the loop. Um, I usually export the song. You know, if I'm sending it to my engineer, I'll just send it. If we're just recording to it um, and getting some ideas for a song, I'll send it, I'll, you know, save it as AAC format and I'll start the export. And then from there, boom, you know, you can okay or you can share it. I usually hit the share button <laughs> and just send it straight over to audio share. The other way is if you're sending out your stems to get mixed or mastered and you want to separate them, you know, you come down here, hit tracks. You can see all the different tracks that you have. You can literally go in between each, you know, bank and say, okay, I, I want those two or only want that one. Um, and it shows you which ones you've used, which ones you didn't. Um, and you know, you can still hit the whole song as a wave format and it will export. Y'all get the point. It's another groove, another feel good groove. And uh, I hope some of these things you're starting to learn, maybe some things you didn't understand and now you do. And, uh, you know, for the most part, when it comes to Beatmaker 3, this thing can do everything that I need it to do. And it's only getting better. The updates keep getting stronger with more, more user friendly. It's not much I can say. This shit is already long enough. You know what it is. I thank you guys for watching this video. I thank you. Please subscribe. Please comment down below. Let me know what you think about Beatmaker 3. And um, really doesn't get much better than this on an iOS device. I'm telling you straight up. So all I gotta say, hope you liked it, hope you check it out, and that's all I got for you today, baby! <laughs> you know what it is. See you next time. Hit em up!